90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the Nassau Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau and welcome to Law You Should Know. Today we're going to offer tips on finding your passion and career, whether it's law or something, some aspect of law or some other field. And this is good for everyone who's starting a career or having a career crisis or wants, is looking for a second career. Our special guest is Mustafa Amor, and he's the author of the upcoming book, The Passion Project. So Mustafa, why is it important for someone to find their passion and also their career? Hi, Kim. Thanks for uh, interviewing me. And uh, yeah, it's it's always good to find your passions because passion is, you know, it's the fuel of your car. If you don't have enough passion for whatever you're doing, you burn out very quickly. So managing to build or rebuild even your career or your life on some of your passions can ensure that you last in that for a long time and you can be successful too. And do sometimes people need to um, recharge their batteries or change the highway they're on or, uh, you know, take a different direction? Exactly. It happens all the time. And it's, you know, research uh, uh, proved that our personality change over time. So me and you can, we were different people 10 years ago from now because we evolve and change, right? Our priorities change, our interests change. And 10 years from now, we'll be different persons as well. So as long as our personality shift or change, our passion change as well. And is it a good thing or should, you know, some people might look back and say, I've spent three years going to law school, five years going to medical school. I don't like it anymore. Is it, or I've, I've spent time getting an MBA or a, a BA that's useless. How can we put that in a, in a better light? I, I like this question again. Thanks for asking this because there are a lot of myth or beliefs that people are traditionally believing in them while they don't suit what's happening and, you know, the, the, the current global environment uh, career wise. So, for example, one of them, one of those myths is it's you have to be a specialist. You know, you have to, you know, stick to one major, you know, grow in that industry, get promoted and then retire at some point with decent uh, <laughs> salary and retirement package. Uh, but this is not the case anymore. And it's fine not to be a specialist because that's a definition of success. Yes. But then there are other ways, you know, to define success. And one of them is to do different things in life. I personally believe that we live one life. So why not pursuing those passions and then merging that expertise or, you know, the knowledge that you have in different industries or domains together? And to the extent we can, we do, it's most important we be happy and enjoy our career or our life's work. So, I mean, it's never, as you say, it's never too late to focus on your dream career. So it's okay to pivot or make turns in your adjustment in your career and take it in different directions. And maybe you can use your prior experience or training in your new career. There's usually some way to do that. Exactly, Ken. And and what I really started to discover, I, I did a few career change. So I started as a pharmacist, then I worked as an international diplomat uh, for 11 years of my life, and then I moved to investment banking, and currently as entrepreneur and uh, a coach and also an author, I found that the more domains you have and the more expertise you have, the more dots you could connect, you know, in your life. So. It's like, you know, you're having that iBird view, you're up there, are able to connect things together. And that's actually super powerful. And if you cannot connect the dots yourself, you could speak to someone in the field that you're thinking about going into. You can speak to a career counselor to see how your past experiences and skills can be used in that new field. And maybe it will help to provide you with certain strengths or expertise in aspects of that new field. 
Exactly. So the main idea, once you are sure of your passions and um, in, in my own methodology, uh, I use, you know, uh, I call it the passion blueprint. So you have your passions, your values and your vision for your dream lifestyle and marrying them together and knowing that this is the right thing and the perfect fit career for you. Then the next step is to go to that industry and ask people there. You know, what I normally do with my clients you know, I ask them to go connect with five, you know, uh, uh, professionals at that new career, that new business, and ask them what are the top three skills that I need to learn in order to get there quickly. And I, th- I think those are good points, and it's good for young points to ask them too. If you're in high school or college or graduate school, it's good to find out about what, how your personality, how your interest, how your knowledge, how your experiences might fit a career or not, or might fit certain aspects of that career. And there's no harm in, in reaching out and getting a preview. 100%. I totally agree with you, Ken. And, and um, I, I work a lot with, with the age of 13 to 17 in, in terms of, because that's an age I like to work with in terms of advising them on what they really want to do. And the main advice I give them is don't rush for an early specialization. Try yourself in different things. And a late specialization is much better than an early specialization because you, you get to try several things in life, right? No, of course. And you can have different careers and you can have different passions. But it's also good to, to find people in those fields, maybe consider a couple of fields, see what your skill set is, see what they like and do exactly. not like about their work environment. Exactly. Visualize yourself in that new career because maybe you like it, but then you never know, right? When you started, maybe... It's not the right fit for you. So and, and you may not you may not like the training or the work environment or what exactly. the job actually entails. Exactly, yes. And how can if someone's not sure about their passions, how can they figure out what their passions are? Uh, so I, I normally have this methodology. It's called the passion meter. So what I, I, I ask people to do is visualize their own passions, spend some time on understanding them. And I would say, that, like, we could give a few examples if if writing is is one of your passions so i help them to visualize that you know when you write what you really like to write and why are you writing is it for an impact on people around you is it you know to satisfy a value in your life is it to share your experiences or not and once they are clear of their top three passions uh, the next step is to define their values and defining your core values Let's imagine this analog here. Uh, imagine that you are driving your car, you know, ac- across the country for thousands of miles. And assume you need three essential elements here. Number one is enough gas for the whole journey. Uh, number two, you need a GPS tracker, you know, to, you know, guide you uh, along the way. And you need the final destination or an address to, you know, to, to add on your uh, GPS tracker. And if we get back to what we are talking about here, um, you know, if you don't have enough gas, you will run out of gas at some point and you'll stop. Um, of course, if you don't have a GPS tracker, you'll get lost at some point. And there is no benefit of a GPS without a final address. So back to our point here, your gas is your passion. If you don't have enough passion, either you run out of gas, you burn out quickly, and then you don't know what you're going to do. And then your GPS tracker is your values. Your values are what will make sure you're always on the right track, satisfying your big values in in life. And having your passions and your values without an end destination, or I would say a vision for your dream lifestyle, is not helpful. So you need to know where are you heading. So visualizing that, you know, dream lifestyle, how would your ideal day be like five years from now? How would your ideal weekend, you know, be like five years from now? And then merging all of this together, you'll figure out that your top passions are satisfying your uh, core values and then both are serving, reaching to that end destination. And while you're taking this journey, you can visit several different locations, which would be, in a sense, several different careers or different aspects of careers to see you know, what impression they make on you. 100%. You're not that. limited to one destination. You can kind of go on a cross-career trip and exactly. explore them a little limited. bit. Yeah, it's not limited. And at the same time, there's something I would say it's a bigger context here. I would call it your life purpose. 
and I believe we all created, you know, to have a life purpose, whether that life purpose supporting, you know, charity cause or helping people around us in society or adding value and, and, and you know, whatever career. And, and I see somehow in my personal experience that there is always connection. Uh, so one of my, my big values in life has been always supporting orphans. And I had it since I was 15 years old. And it grew with me even across different careers. Now, uh, when I grow more, when I have more money, I give more. And then that goes give me more in my life. And it grows with me until now. I really want to, it's part of my hopefully big goal. I want to go out and teach and coach 1 million orphans, hopefully in the future to dream about their lives. So always connecting your, you know, your passions, you know, with the new career, with the big value in your life, or let's say the big life purpose it's super powerful. So is it important that people dream about or visualize their first or next career and start by doing that before they explore it, before they research it? 100%. There, there, there are two ways to look at it. The first one is very practical. It's You really need to imagine yourself there, right? So you need to, whether my new career is banking or, you know, being a lawyer or, or wherever I want to work, I have to imagine myself every day doing this because i will i commit you know my life or let's say the coming few years to that career so that's very practical i have to visualize myself and see myself there Go, going through all the challenges you know achieving victories and all of those stuff the other part it's more related to your subconscious because is there is a, a, a superpower that we all have you know, and if we use it to the you know the, the highest level, it would we would be superheroes. It's our subconscious, and the more you could feed your subconscious using that visualization technique, the more that subconscious can work out things for you. Uh, and there are hundreds of examples of people who were so successful in feeding their subconscious, you know, with a lot of positive ideas, and then giving them the time to figure out things for them. And it happens all the time. I just want to remind everyone, we're talking with uh, entrepreneur and career counselor, Mustafa Amar. He's also the author of the upcoming book, The Passion Project. And he's talking to us about finding your passion and career, whether it's law or some aspect of law or something else, or if you're trying to reinvent yourself. As we emerge from COVID, uh, yeah. will, do you think people will be um, rethinking their career or whether they're in a career now or whether they had thoughts about their career before, whether they'll be changing their evaluation or conclusions about what might work for them? Yeah, thanks, Ken, for this question, because it's, yeah, it's exactly what's happening right now. I mean, we've been hearing about what, what's called in the news, the great resignation. And there are like hundreds of thousands of people, they are resigning from, you know, their current jobs. And in, in, like even this year, April and July, the numbers are so high. Um, and when I look back at, you know, I, I did my own research on, on, on this for the, the last two years, and I found concepts like career PTSD. So uh, people were suffering from traumas, you know, coming from, you know, their careers, uh, career burnout, uh, uh, people were burnt out. And, and, and what happened with, you know, the good side of the pandemic is that people started, you know, thinking and reflecting on their lives, you know, whether what they are doing really matters for, you, for them or not, whether they are fulfilling their passions or not. And I think the main idea here is that, you know, people started figuring out that this is not what we really want to do. Uh, lack of passion is a major source of, you know, like pushing people to resign and, and then think through what really matters for them. So it brings us again back to our passions. If we rebuild our careers on passion, we satisfy our life. And so some people may need a tune-up or may need to a different career at some point in their life because they, their passion has run out and, or maybe they find something where they have a, a greater passion. It always happens. So as we talked earlier, let our personality change and shift and evolve. The same happens for our passions. Maybe what we were passionate about 10 years ago is not the same anymore. So 
you know, wise people who understand that shift in passion and start acting accordingly based on that. Uh, it's, it's fine to do new things in life. There's no something called sunk cost. So because I've, I've seen that always in my life, like people like, you know, say they spend 10 years in one career. And, you know, if I leave that career and go and start some, somewhere else from scratch, that's a sunk cost. And I always tell them that you always can transfer um, all your skills from that ex, you know, career to your new career. I will just give you an example. Sure. Um, I I I studied pharmacy and chemistry in in university. That was my major. And at some point, I thought, okay, I want to be a diplomat. I studied hard. Then I became a diplomat. And I went to China to study Chinese. So I thought at some point that my chemistry knowledge was gone forever, and it's a sunk cost. But what happened is I learned Chinese very quickly. I was able to master reading and writing very quickly. In the beginning, I didn't know the reason, but uh, when I understood a concept called analogical thinking, so what happened in analogical thinking is that you could bring the analogy of an old or former experience to the new experience. And looking at organic chemistry and how you draw compound, it's always drawn in a certain logic. And I apply, I apply this, I, I would say, unintentionally to reading and writing Chinese. So I could read and write in the same way that I used to draw the compound. And it was super helpful. So especially in light of COVID or even times where we don't have it, we're not dealing with something as large as COVID, it's always important for people to rethink their careers. Are they enjoying it? Are they getting economic rewards? Do they have a future? Do they still have their passion for the career? That's definitely, that's number one source of, of uh, fulfillment. And I would add to that, that the major source of regret is not regretting our mistakes. You know, we commit mistakes all the time. We learn from them, we get over them, and then we move on. Uh, but the number one source of regret in our lives are about the things that we really wanted to do, but we never did. The passion we wanted to pursue, we never did. The skills that we wanted to learn, but we never did. You know, there's a very, very uh, famous book. It's called the, the, the Five Top Regrets of the Dying by Bronnie Ware. Uh, she's an Australian author, and and. She used to take care, she was a caregiver of people who were about to die, like a few weeks before they die. Number one source of regret were about the things that you always wanted to pursue and the passion they wanted always to pursue, but you never did. So imagining that regret, you know, I think we all should act accordingly. Once I have a passion, I should just explore it. I don't have to leave my current job right now. I should just give myself at least one hour every day to explore that new passion and see how things will evolve. And maybe at some point you can segue into that. You can do it half-time, do it as a hobby, and exactly. and, and basically switch to that other field where it, you would exactly. think you might be I, happier. Exactly. I don't advise anybody to just jump in the ocean right away. Uh, but if you have a calling about something, about doing something, if you have a passion that is born inside you about doing something, explore it. Give it, give it some time. Reflect on it. Like, you know, 30 minutes every day on, on, you know, reflecting on it is super powerful. It will lead you somewhere. And, you know, one of, I, I like this definition. I, I, I even writing about it in my book, uh, passions are the seeds that God plants in your heart to figure out your life purpose. So some people have these seeds, you know, in their hearts, but they don't water it. They don't take care of it, Right. Others, you know, just take care of it and give it the time and, you know, water it until they grow. So it's good to give a little time. It's good to try to help your passion grow. You you want to see if you can generate that flower or if you're going to like that flower it generates or you're better off with a different type of flower. Exactly. You, you never know. You never know. And how can someone build their, their resilience as they're, as they're pursuing their passion? You know, there are a lot, of, yeah. a lot of strategies and tactics here, but I think number one is to have your own faith, you know, faith in yourself, faith in God, faith in, I would say, in the justice of the universe, that when you do your best, you will get rewarded. I still remember those days that were tough on me when I was a pharmacist and I want to be a diplomat, and I still remember it. It was a very tough process. It took me two years of, you know, of exams. 
uh, we were two thousands contestant and at the end you're going to take 20 and i remember everybody around me was telling me that you know do you think that they take you and you are a pharmacist and leave all those guys who are much more you know experienced than you do um and i understand the point but i believed in myself i had faith in myself and i was every day asking myself the same question but then coming to the same the same question every day i asked myself another question might be impossible for me yes but is it impossible for god in the same moment i answer of course no it's not impossible for him so the same conclusion every day is that then work on your part just take care of your part so having that faith will help you to focus on your part always do your best and knowing that with hard work with following your passions because again your passions are planted implanted in your heart for some reason you are just following them you will get there anyway. Okay, I just want to remind our listeners that you're listening to Law You Should Know on 90.3 WHP Sue. We're talking to Mustafa Amar. He's the founder and CEO of The Passion MBA, and he's coming out with a book called The Passion Project so that people thinking about their first career or already involved in a career can find their true passion. What are some of the things that you cover in, in your book, The Passion Project? The main idea if we consider if we consider our life or careers as projects which is the case uh some people they build their lives or careers on weak foundations and what happen is that the whole career the whole life project will collapse you know the second category they build their lives or careers on weak on on wrong foundations and these wrong foundations for them will result into you know they would spend most of the time trying to fix the problems coming from that so what i'm trying to do here is to help people to rebuild their careers their life their businesses on the right foundations and when you do that you know you can build something like a skyscraper uh, a taj mahal or or a pyramid that can live much longer uh, than you do so it's quite practical it's a step by step blueprint when you follow it step by step because i have done it in in my several career transitions and it worked and i did it on my 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 clients too so it's a step by step blueprint once you do it you will get to where you want and there's nothing wrong with reevaluating your career uh throwing in the towel on one career and pivoting into another career and sometimes it's the best option if you really you're tired of one career or the economy is not good in the in the current economy one of the conclusion i learned in my life that we don't have an end destination that you know I, like if i if i was graduated as a pharmacist i don't have to be a pharmacist all my life it it's really about the journey itself so you know the journey is about enjoying is about fulfilling is about learning is about you know marrying knowledge and and you know enjoying what you're doing and that concept is 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 very powerful and people know that it's it's just the journey not the destination and and things change in the world the conditions in a field may change the need for people in a field may change and people's interest in a field may change you're not locked into one field or career you, exactly you shouldn't lock yourself into a career or, or i mean over the last 200 300 years we were the last 200 years we were just we were we learned that we have to be specialists but actually if you look historically at most of the civilizations you know the renaissance man was somebody who was doing different things in life you know you had you had people who were like they were painters they were you know poems they were you know astro ast uh, astrologists they were doing different things in life and this is the where the magic comes from when you connect dots together when you connect several domains together the magic happens Actually there is another study showed that uh, I believe 80 plus percent of Nobel laureates were people who were doing different things rather than just sticking and specializing in one single career. One of the example if somebody who changed his career when he was 40 and then by 50 he changed again and then by 60 you know he already was in three careers he got Nobel. And I just want to also ask you in as part of your coaching program how do you help someone build the skills that they need to to uh, change their career so we, the the first step of course to be aware of their passions and values and and their vision for dream lifestyle and this is how we build 
resilience and commitment, consistency to build those skills. And what we do is we devise a plan. Of course, it's a case by case, uh, depending on you know what, what really matters for you and really want to do. And we focus on the top three skills. If you have them, you can you know have those, you know, I would say hacks in the process. Because again, you are an outsider. You are somebody who is a generalist, not a specialist. So, so you are bringing something different to the table. So, like for example, when I was a diplomat, I, I moved to uh, a banking career. It wasn't easy for me, but I had to focus on first of all. I had to learn skills quickly, and then I had to use some of those experiences that I have already, you know, in in my diplomacy career. One of them was negotiations. So I could use it in the banking career. The other one was business development because I was I was trained to build connections and communications quickly with governments, you know, with even private sector. I could use that. So always think of how you can bring, you know, your former expertise, former experience with you to the new place. And secondly, what else you need to know or understand very quickly to hack the process. I think those are very good points. And in your book, The the Passion Project, sounds very interesting. Just give us your website so our listeners can find out more about your background and the book. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the website is thepassionmba.com. There are a few interesting stuff. You can download for free uh, an ebook uh, about the 10 top mistakes to avoid when planning your career change. Uh, if you want to figure out their passions, you know, the passion meter um, uh, exercise is there for free. Okay. There is a quiz as well to help them to, you know, uh, plan their next uh, uh, career. Okay. Um, also on Instagram as the Passion MBA. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank our guests for talking about the Passion Project and our listeners for tuning in to Law You Should Know. If you missed any part of the program, you want to tell someone else about it. The podcast is available at nccradio.org. And please join us next week at this same time for another program on Law You Should Know on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College in Garden City, New York.